Hi, this is Jill, helping you access this article on leadership flexibility. The article, as the title suggests, takes research from a number of resources sources, to make the construct, the idea of leader flexibility more rigid, more clear. So it's playing with the words rigid and flexibility. For your purposes, this paper from the Journal of Change Management, published in 2010, helps you understand leader flexibility and how you might use it. If we look at the abstract, leader flexibility is defined as a determinant of leader emergence and effectiveness. That means it's connected to how leaders emerge or develop and how effective they are. It talks about the leadership flexibility as a capacity to respond well to situational requirements. So as the situation you face as a leader changes, you will use leadership flexibility to improve your effectiveness. The part in the middle is not so important, it's more academic, but where we need to focus is in what this paper is concluding. It constructs a general framework to better understand leader flexibility. So by taking all these ideas about leader flexibility from other papers, it generates a general framework. Interestingly, it provides specific types of flexibility for leaders to consider in their development. Well, you guys are developing specific types of flexibility that you need to consider suggests that they're going to provide in this paper a range of leader flexibility types and you can consider them. You don't have to become slaves to them, you can just wonder about them according to the situations you face. Moving down, the introduction reinforces this. So effective leadership requires that one adapt to the needs of the situation because of change and environmental complexity. I've highlighted this little quote from another paper from Monikowski, and which says that as a leader you need to make little changes, micro adjustments with each other and within ourselves. So you need to think about how you're changing yourself internally and how also how you, you're changing how you interact with other people. So, current leadership thus requires a distinct individual ability to be flexible in response to plan change, as well as continuously changing context. So we have some type of background against which we're probing this article. We want to become flexible leaders, we know why we need to become flexible leaders, and we know what will happen as a result of becoming flexible leaders. Moving down, this article highlights several of the common uses of flexibility across disciplines in order to widen our potential understanding of leader flexibility. So in the material above what I've just highlighted is talking about how you're drawing together all sources of information from different disciplines. We needn't look at those. We might do if we wanted to research flexibility. But we don't. We just want to get to the core of the understanding of the work that these two people, these two authors, Good and Sharma, have done to bring together other research. Well, what do they do? They propose a leader flexibility framework, viewing flexibility as a three-stage cycle. And each part of that cycle, each situation that those three stages represents, requires flexibility. The first part of this paper, the main part of the paper, looks at these specific flexibilities. So let's wander through these different types of flexibility. And as we wander through, you as a manager would be considering, well, which of these might I need to use at what particular points in the simulation? So coping flexibility. Emergent dynamics comp dynamic and complex situations require new ways of appraising the situation and employing different strategies for coping. And they highlight that with leadership problems and complex challenges that leaders face, 
There are elements of the problem that are controllable and elements that are uncontrollable. And differentiating between these two, creating trade-offs between different perspectives on a problem allows you to cope. And they comment on the fact that the sheer load of responsibilities of a leader can feel, feel overwhelming. And certainly many of you might feel overwhelmed by the client problem in the simulation. But leaders, it says, have high coping flexibility, able to perceive the parts of the situation that aren't controllable and get on with managing those who are. So in the simulation, you might like to think about what you deem to be controllable and uncontrollable. Explanatory flexibility, the second type of flexibility that Good and Sharma look at. This talks of the perceived cause of emergent events. So as you're writing to the, the client, as you're grappling in the team, you will create emergent events. And how you explain these is an important part of flex leader flexibility. Are you seeking to explain why the client is re reacting to you in a certain way? Are you seeking to explain how one part of the problem or challenge is related to another? So the leader's self-explanation of an event has potential implications for decision making in the future, such as sharing leadership opportunities with subordinates for their development. So that's the implication in the longer term. For you guys at the moment, you're seeking to not just describe the challenge, but wonder about it and explain at it and come at it from different angles. And your presentations will probably reflect those different angles. So attributing possible causes may give the leader an opportunity to explore a wider range of solutions. Interflexibility, internal, oops, interpersonal flexibility. Let me get that right. Now, scrolling down here, I haven't highlighted this one, but you can see yourself. I'm at least geared towards this part. Internal, interpersonal flexibility is linked to several straight traits. So that means things that you're born with, but possibly can enhance. So self-monitoring, are you aware of how much you're contributing or not to the simulation, in what ways you're contributing? Empathy, so are you understanding how other people are feel? And have you got a locus of control? Are you managing as well as leading? And how much control do you have over different people in your group? Interpersonal flexibility, says this last paragraph, is an important aspect of leading flexible, flexibly. If a leader is aware of his or her motives behind behaviour response, it is more likely that he or she will overcome the rigidity in response. So it's trying to create empathy through self-awareness between people so that you have a flexibility in how you're handling the plant client problem. Emotional flexibility. Well, some of you have already experienced emotions as regards how messy this problem is, how complex it is, how difficult it is to see a final goal because you guys are creating the final goal yourself. The client has given you a general one. Sometimes you'll feel positive emotions, sometimes you'll feel negative emotions. Emotional flexibility, say the leaders, drawing again on work of many other people, is about regulating emotions across different situations. So it's not about you either having a positive or negative reaction, it's about understanding how those positive and negative emotions can be used. So emotional flexibility can be achieved by learning to control initial impulses, reappraise stimuli that have led to those responses, and process the emotions more effectively. Learning flexibility. Each simulation opportunity you have in the classroom presents new challenges. Are you looking back and seeing what you could bring forward in terms of learning into any new time that you spend on the simulation, on the leadership task? So if you reflect on your experience, grasp it, wonder about it, alter how you react to it in the future, you are learning flexibly or showing exhibiting leadership flexibility in terms of learning style. 
Are you accommodating the, lead the learning styles of other people? Are you encouraging other people to reflect and redesign? The best results are often produced with a response to a particular situation that uses the most suitable modes of learning. An effective leader is thus aware of his or her learning style, understands the subtle cues of the learning situation and is able to change the learning style in order to respond to the situation accordingly. And at your level, just wonder about your learning. How effectively are you learning as you embrace this messy problem? Communication flexibility. Now this would appear to be quite an important one for your task. Studies of leader rhetoric, so that's how leaders speak, show that leaders' choice of words, symbols and expressions influence the extent to which the receiver becomes inspired, aroused and committed. So, how enthusiastic do you think your client is about your possibility of helping him lead better? And you need to have an appropriate communication that coincides with the situation. So your communications with the client need always to be professional and respectful, but they might alter in different ways according to how he responds to you and what type of information and got communication goals you have in mind. A noted verbal capacity of flexible communicators is their ability to disagree by engaging in arguments without becoming verbally aggressive. Difficult, I know, but worth trying. So communication and flexibility, the last sentence there, may help the leader in better relationship management and lead to a more developed leader flexibly. Gender flexibility. Again, here, like the positive and emotional um, flexibility, it is not telling you either to adopt masculine traits or to adopt feminine traits, but to be aware where traditionally masculine traits might be more beneficial and traditionally feminine traits might be more beneficial. As organisational members confront change, the leader's ability to flexibly utilise the strength of both ge traditional gender roles may have a positive effect on enhancing leader flexibility. So what does your situation require you? More masculine or more feminine generalised traits? Cognitive flexibility. This is different from explanatory. In explanatory you're trying to work out cause and effect. You're trying to be analytical. This cognitive flexibility type is saying you will come to the situation with fixed mental schema. You'll have some experiences that mean that you put a frame around this problem that will be different from somebody else. So can you respond to the situation in a new way? Can you bend any experiences you have in the past to ensure they don't affect you too much? So this cognitive control by which you analyse what biases, what experiences you might be bringing to the table with the simulation that might be negatively affecting your performance are removed. Decision making flexibility, well this is about are you taking a lot of time to remove cognitive flexibility or mental schemas, to seek explanations, to communicate very well, that you're not even making a decision to move forward. So to be an effective decision maker the leader should generate alternatives that deal with change reactively and proactively. So you not only need to react to the client or react to members in your group or react to new knowledge around the problem, you need to do more than that. You need to preempt how many decisions you might need to take to get to the client's solution or to a solution for the client. So you need to be creative in how many options you generate around decisions and how open you are to new ideas, information and roles, but then you must make the decision. Each of the specific flexibilities, it says, that we've listed above, so all they've, we've gone through all the different types of flexibility that you could consider in your emergence as a leader, and they've put them into a flexibility framework. So they're saying there's a time when you're a leader when you might be perceiving the opportunity for leadership, then there might be time when you're actually generating some options around what to do next, and then you're actually taking some action and executing the decision. And the authors are making the point that at each of these stages you might need to exhibit 
leadership flexibility. So implications for practice, and it can be a good idea if you're reading an academic paper to look out for any titles such as implications for practice or managerial implications, as that's the way you will find the most useful information for you as a practicing manager. Leaders at every level are charged in today's organisation to continually self-develop. You need a meta-competency to be aware not only of how so you need meta competency means not only do you need to be flexible in all these areas but you need to know how a situation demands you to be more or less flexible in a particular area so does a situation demand that you are um, emotionally flexible does a situation demand that you are above all explan showing explanatory flexibility you need to have that ability to manage your skills around each of these areas of flexibility. And then the tables show you how, according to the type of flexibility, you might use it when you're perceiving the leadership opportunity and getting your head around it, how you're actually generating options and how you're acting. And generally speaking, these types of tables or models of work are interesting for practicing managers because it gives you a framework and in class you might wish and outside of class to continue to choose some types of flexibility that you think would help you become more effective leaders given your situation.